Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I recently posted a video detailing my process of mixing up a layout die for marking out work pieces. And for the work that I do, which mostly involves machining aluminium, brass and thermoplastics, the combination of shellac and die is a great and affordable solution. However, my understanding is that this type of layout die is a much more modern solution that wasn't used so much in the past. So I think it would be very interesting to take a look at how the old machinists approached this problem. Now there are a lot of machinery books out there that date from the 17 and 1800s, but the earliest book that I have that is relevant to machining is this first edition copy of the Machinery's Handbook. Now this is a more modern reproduction, but all the content is as it was back in 1914. The first layout die that we'll look at is the coppering solution. The coppering solution that it calls for is very simple, as it expected the machinist to be able to mix it from readily available materials. The handbook says to 4 ounces of distilled water or rainwater, add all the copper sulphate it will dissolve, then add 10 drops of sulfuric acid. And that sounds pretty simple for the most part. Copper sulfate, blue stone or blue vitriol as it's also known is pretty easy to come by at most hardware stores as it's used in agriculture as a fungicide and for correcting copper deficiency in soils. And at about 13 bucks for 500 grams, it's very affordable as 500 grams should be enough to make several litres of layout solution. Now I won't be needing too much of this solution as I'll get into later, so I only made up about 25 mils of it, just under one fluid ounce. About two grams of copper sulfate should be enough to saturate this solution. At this point I should add the sulfuric acid, but first let's prepare our stock. The handbook doesn't say it, but we do need to remove any protective oxides, and we do need to clean the surface with denatured alcohol. The piece I'll be testing on is just a piece of mild steel. With the surface cleaned, I'll apply a generous coating of the copper sulphate, and quickly you'll see the surface turn a reddish brown. This is the copper sulphate reacting with the iron to form iron sulphate, and depositing a thin layer of copper on the workpiece. However, I can easily see two issues. The coating is very uneven. Even though the part was evenly brushed with the copper sulphate and it was cleaned of the oxides and with denatured alcohol, the coating is very uneven. And secondly, the coating is very fragile, easily wiping away with a cloth. This is where the sulfuric acid becomes important. The recipe calls for 10 drops of it, but unfortunately it's not so easy to come by at the moment. It was commonly sold as a drain cleaner, but most brands that I looked at have switched to a sodium hydroxide alternative. And sodium hydroxide is not a good substitute, as it will form a blue precipitate comprised of copper hydroxide and sodium sulfate, and furthermore, what we really need is an acid, and sodium hydroxide is a strong base. A while back I saw Mr. Pete's video on this subject, and the formula he used to make this comprised of nitric acid in place of the sulfuric acid. However, he goes on in that video to substitute it for battery acid, which actually seems to work. It's a great video and I recommend giving it a watch. Now I don't have any nitric acid on hand, nor do I have any battery acid, though I wondered if any acid would do the job. Vinegar is just a weak dilution of acetic acid at about 4%, so I went ahead and added a small drop to the solution. And as you can see, the vinegar has had a big impact on the solution. It reacts more readily with the iron, and the coating is much more even, and most importantly, it's much tougher than before. The part can now be marked up for machining. Unlike the shellac and dye method, the copper is unaffected by any solvents, so to remove it we need to use Scotch-Brite or abrasive paper. The only real downside to this method is that scribing does leave a fine mark, something that does not occur when you use layout dye or markers. 
Now this reaction occurs because of a term known as reduction potentials, and it's for this reason that this reaction won't work on any copper-based alloys such as brass or bronze. However, we can infer that it should work on aluminium. Now aluminium is naturally coated in a thin protective oxide, so we can easily remove it using some Scotch-Brite or abrasive paper. When I added the solution, the reaction was, well, disappointing. There was pretty much little to no reaction. I have read, however, that a solution of copper sulfate and sodium chloride will help destroy the oxide film for the reaction to take place. I added some salt to the solution and the reaction was very different. A black precipitate formed, but no copper was deposited. However, going over it again with a non-salted solution had some copper form, but the result was less than ideal. The coverage was very poor and uneven. And furthermore, this reaction produced a fair amount of hydrogen gas, which in some workshops could easily be a very big hazard. The reaction with aluminium was very disappointing. If I find a better way of doing it, I will let you know, but so far I'm just not satisfied with it. However, the results with iron were really great and better than expected. The speed at which the reaction took place makes it a great candidate for layout over the much slower drying layout dyeing. I find it a real shame that I was never taught this method as it is a really good alternative to the layout dye. And whilst we're on the topic of layout lines and the machinery's handbook, below the recipe for the coppering solution is a formula for white coatings for layout lines, something that Mr. Pete said in his video that he had not tried. I was a little bit curious, though I was sceptical, though I had heard of people talk about using chalk-based coatings in the past. The machinery's handbook is quite vague on this method, but it says chalk and alcohol is preferable. So I went ahead and bought some powdered chalk and added it to some denatured alcohol at various concentrations. And the results are, well, what you'd expect. The handbook doesn't say it, but this is really meant for porous castings. And there it works well, and in fact in porous castings you can just rub the chalk in. But for polished aluminium, this is a pretty poor method for layout. Once the alcohol evaporates, the chalk can be easily wiped away. I tried to add some shellac to act as a binder, but all it did was clump up the chalk, and it did very little to improve the layout. All it really did was turn the chalk yellow. And with that, thank you very much for watching.